Hey friends, real fast, we're going to show you how to wire up video distribution. This is something we're getting asked about a lot right now, especially from our pre-wired design clients who are thinking about wiring up their own homes. One of the reasons we use video distribution or HDMI distribution, whatever you want to call it, this is a great example of it. This is a new Samsung Frame TV, and as you can tell, it's perfectly clean on the wall. There's no cable clutter. We don't have any media cabinets here to hide components. It makes it look like a picture on the wall, and that is one of the reasons we use video distribution. It also allows us to send multiple sources out to different TVs in the house. But how do we wire for it? Wiring your TVs is is actually really simple, but it gets a little confusing because there's a few things at play here. When we wire up our TVs, there are three things that we're sending to the TV. Number one is control. We're not gonna get into this too much in this video, but there are three ways we can control a TV. We can use IR, we can use serial, and we can use IP, which is really kind of like serial over the network. Either way we go, we're gonna use wire to send that control out to the TV. The second thing we're gonna send to the TV is the network. We want our TVs to be hardwired into the network, especially if you're using streaming services like Hulu or Netflix, and particularly if you're gonna be watching 4K content, we want a hardwired connection to the network. The third thing we're gonna send, of course, is the video. The simplest recommendation I can give you is to run 4Cat6 and then an RG6 or coax for good measure. And if I told you that, it would be accurate and you would always have enough wire for anything you would wanna do with your TVs and your video distribution. But if you go out online and you research or if you wait just a few minutes for some comments to start coming in, somebody's gonna say, oh, that's bogus, you just need one Cat5 or one Cat6. And that's kinda of true, but it depends on the context of the installation. You've gotta know that the hardware you're bringing to the table for your video distribution and the TVs are such that they can support a configuration that only requires one Cat5 or one Cat6. At six. Most of our clients, when they come to us about pre-wiring their homes, don't know what TVs they're going to have, and they don't know yet if they're going to do video distribution. And so in that moment, we have to make a decision about how to pre-wire the home. And if you don't know what you're doing, the easiest thing is to run 4Cat6. Your control, which again is how we're going to turn the TV on and off, change the inputs, change the volume, it requires 1Cat6. Your home network requires 1Cat6. Video is the interesting one. The recommendation for 4K content right now is to run 2Cat6 or fiber. And in this case, if you're planning to wire the home for yourself, I recommend using 2Cat6. So if you look at this, it's really easy to tell. You may need as many as 4Cat6 per TV. So one of the reasons this gets confusing is with control in the home network. TVs like Sony's Android TVs accept a type of control called IP, which again happens over the network. And if you're using IP control, you don't need a control wire and a network wire. You can plug an Ethernet into the back of your Sony TV and you're going to be able to send the network and send control over the network to that TV. In fact, when we wire up homes, we talk with our clients in advance and there are specific TVs they can bring to the table. And so we know in advance that the video distribution system that they're purchasing and the TVs are compatible and we know exactly the amount of wires we need to use to make that work and in our case we don't need the extra control wire we just need the network wire so we wire up our homes with three cat six but a lot of people come to the table and when they move into their home they have three four TVs that they're bringing from an old home that won't accept IP control over the network so they have to have another wire for control whether it's IR or serial they need that extra wire in addition to the network cable real fast I wanted to just show you how the video works. If you've never seen this, it sounds complex, but it's actually really simple. What we're doing is taking a Cat6 wire or a Cat5 wire and we're converting it into an HDMI. So I'll show you how that works. This is called a video bound and an HDMI bound. This one's actually one from Control 4. And what you do is you take your Cat6 that you run for video distribution and you plug it in to the video balance, and then we're able to plug an HDMI into the other side of the video balance and plug this one into the TV. And that's how we distribute our video content from our centralized location out to the TV. The recommendation for manufacturers right now for 4K video distribution is that you use 2Cat6 or fiber. And if you're pre-wiring the home yourself, we recommend that you use the 2Cat6. What you have to understand is that there's different levels of 4K content. We're still getting a somewhat compressed version of 4K. And as we have a completely uncompressed version available to us that we can stream and distribute, we will need more bandwidth to move all the information in that video content from the, from the video distribution system out to the TVs. It will require 2Cat6 or fiber to push all of that content out. So we run 2Cat6 for the video, but right now most of your balance only support 1Cat6. So we're very much future-proofing the home, but today you'll only use one of those Cat6 when you fire up your video distribution system. 
So again, just to recap, if you're running wire for your TVs today and you don't know yet what TVs you're gonna bring to the table and what video distribution system you're gonna have, we recommend running four cat six cables and then again, for good measure, run some coax to each TV. That's gonna make sure you cover all your options when you get to the other side and you start installing your TVs and firing up your smart home system. As always, if you've got any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments. If you've liked this video, give us a like and subscribe and make sure you watch for our next video. Thank you.